Hello Africa, hello world. You're welcome to Sports Business with Orufo Zaga. Today, we promise you another exciting package. And we're going to be talking to young Nigerians today. We're going to be talking to, you know, um, young Nigerians who see opportunities in the emerging sports industry in Nigeria. First, I'm going to be speaking with a 22-year-old FIFA licensed scout. He's the youngest um, or FIFA licensed um, agent. He's the youngest in Nigeria. He's 22, a graduate of Redeemers University. And, you know, we're going to be talking about why he got into the program uh, so early, what he saw that made him get into that program, because it's an untypical um, career path for most young Nigerians. What has he, what has he seen that has made him uh, you know, um, choose to walk this path? And then after him, uh, his name, by the way, is Mr. Ad Precious Ade Mayowa um, Kodaisi, why did he choose this path? And then after him, we're going to be talking to two gentlemen who um, are behind the Play Ball Africa annual football tournament. What event this is, is that it pitches Nigerian university teams against each other. And it's a one day event, it's fun and games. And whoever emerges champion um, is decided on that day. There, tournament this year is happening in four days time on saturday at um, campus square in lagos island the defending champions are bell Univers bells university and they're going to be participating along with 11 other um, nigerian university teams joining us would be from, that's from playball africa would be george okonkwo he's the ceo of playball africa and then with him will be Mr. Emmanuel Adegelu, who is, the, who is a, an executive director of Playball Africa. Some of these guys are still students. Some have only recently graduated. There are about four, five of them in this group. And they have had this tournament now for three years running. This is going to be the third or fourth edition, I think. And I'm going to be speaking with them about, you know, whether they're gaining traction, whether uh, your Nigerian university students are, um, you know, um, recognizing or, or are aware that this is happening. And, and what do you see of, of the future that the program has? You know, so it is football, it is young Nigerians, and um, prepare yourself if you're a young Nigerian to listen to these guys. You'll be inspired, you know. And what I can say to you from this end is that sports in Nigeria is an emerging industry. As a matter of fact, the rising business consciousness around the sports industry makes it one for the future. It's going to be a major industry. And when the sports industry breaks, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for young people, especially, you know, um, in this country where we say young people need, uh, need such opportunities. I'm going to, we're going to go on a short break. So let me give you a, a time to, to adjust to what's going to come and probably invite a friend of you or two of yours to be a part of this. All right. When we return, the business begins. So you're welcome back to the program Sports Business with Orufo Izaga. We're reaching you from Plus TV Africa and we're in our studio, reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. In the studio with me is Mr. Ademayowa Kudaisi, the young FIFA licensed agent, um, 22 years, and he's supposed to be the youngest or so in Nigeria. Um, welcome to the program, Ademayowa. Um, Thank you, sir. Yamayo, why you Pelumi? What should I call you? Pelumi. Pelumi. Yes. Okay, so I'll call him Pe Pelumi. So yeah, Pelumi, tell me why you know you're 22. You're a, a FIFA licensed agent. When did you get your license? It was May. May. 2024. Yeah. May 2024. Yeah. Hmm. So what? Tell us why? Why did you uh, choose to go along this path? So basically, when I was in school, I used to play ball like actively mm. in the school team and everything. So one day, I told my dad I wanted to play ball, and he was like, "Okay, let me support you." He took me to an academy. 
mm. and I got there and I saw ballers, like I saw real footballers and they didn't have the opportunity to actually go pro and everything. And I knew I was like level below them because these guys were very talented. Mm. I think that was when it dawned on me that now I have to look for something else to do. Mm. And at that time I was studying business in school, so I started researching. Then I saw an article about Igalo moving from China to Manchester. That's um, Igalo, what's his uh, Odion Igalo. Odion Igalo. Yeah, okay. at that time. So I was like, how will someone leave China to a top club? Like, because we see China, Chinese league as like a retirement league. Mm. So I was very interested in the agent that broke out the deal. The deal. Then I started researching on him. It was um, Atta Eneke, I don't know if you know him. Sorry, it was? Eneke Atta. Okay. So I started reading on, on what they do, how to become an agent. I was telling my friends we like to, so we used to just go to the room, talk about it all day. I will get an agency, mm. collect scarce positions, and then we we'll have them. Then I think after school I went for my service. Then after service I just went for the exam, and luckily for luckily for me I got the license, and since then it's been good. Okay, so let's even talk about your parents first for a, yeah. um, for a, for a, mi a minute. You know, in, in this part of the world, we the parents, we want you to be doctors, we want you to be the lawyers, engineers. You know, it's still a strange phenomenon in this part that somebody's choosing a career in sports. Not as a sportsman, but as an agent for a young man. You know, how did your parents um, receive the choice of a the, your choice of career well my mom was very supportive my dad too the same thing mm. so from some level i was already telling them when i'm done with school i'm going to become an agent mm. i was educating them on what they do mm. and how the thing is very like um lucrative mm. so i told them everything and they to the research and my dad said uh, uh, there's no point doing what you don't like like, it's better you just do what you are interested in. So, he told me, no problem, go and get the form, go and research about it. I think he accepted when I finished. And I was always complaining, like, ah, this nice five is not for me. He gets, mm. I want to be on the field, discovering people and pitching them to club. Like, basically, the business aspect. So, he saw the vision and it is a football fan. Mm. So, he understood and then they gave me the necessary support to you. Okay, so would you say, are you, I can see that this is something that you, you care about, you know, mm -hmm. but would you say that you are a passionate um, agent? Do, do, would you, what's driving you? What's the, what's the big goal driving you? The hunger to succeed mm. um, and really helping talents out of like where they are. Because this thing, like when I started, I like got my license. Most people get a license and then they relax. Mm. So when I got my license, I went outside immediately. You see me at Unicorn, you see me at like where the things are happening. Mm. I started attending programs, meeting with people, connecting mm. with sporting directors. Mm. And I think I met that my role model I said inspired mm. me. Mm. I met him recently and he was like, wow, he's in, like I'm the youngest he has seen. Mm. And we started networking. So and anytime I see any talent that is where I would try to just fix them to a club. It's just something of passion for me. Mm. I don't mind spending my own personal resources on them. Mm. You want to go for a training, okay, take this. You want to do this. Because at the end of the day, I know how they suffer mm. to get to where they are or to do what they are doing. Mm. Then at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, I know how it will take a toll on their mental health. So I'm just doing it like something I'm passionate about. Okay, so where, where do you go and search for talents? Where do you get your talents from? Yeah, you go to the grassroots games. Okay. You can just be branching anywhere, like you can be walking, obviously you see a pitch, you can just check them out. If you see a very exciting, like exceptional talent, then mm. you can just approach him after the game. Yo, what's your plan? What do you want to do? Okay, can I fix you up to this? Because most sporting directors come to me now and tell me, okay, now I'm looking for a defender. Mm. I'm looking for a winger. I'm looking for a midfielder. I can send you there. Mm. Any academy, I can just send you to the coach. They will mm. see if you are good enough. Then you join the team. And now you have a part. Mm. So, but do you have p particular clubs that you work with? Yeah, I'm just starting now, but yeah, there's this club called Reality FC. Um, 
It's a very big club. He has been in existence since 2007 or so. Okay. I met him at One X Bets Cup. So um, we've been working together. I've been giving them some talent. Um, I've met with some clubs. I've gone to Sporting Lagos. I've gone to Remo. And I talked with their CEOs and everything. And they gave me an opportunity to bring players anytime I'm ready. Okay, so how does this work? Do you... Do you um, so you talk to the clubs yeah. and then they say, you know what, go scout for players for, for us. Do you understand? Um, yeah. And um, so, why would Remo, for instance, tell you to to do that in an area where people have easy access to the club? Is it not like you're supposed to represent like clubs that are far away? Mm -hmm. You can actually start from anywhere. Okay. That's the thing. I me, mean, I'm more interested in this NPFL mm. as a whole. So basically, it's like an open. If you have a good player, obviously, mm. a club will. It's just like what they do in Europe. Mm. If you have a good player, they see a good player. If clubs see a good player, mm. they will sign him. So now all clubs need players. Yeah, mm. most of their players leave at the end of the season. Mm. You know how Nigerian mm. Premier League is. So if you have a talented player that can help the team, you can just bring the player to the club. Mm. I don't, I don't know if it's an open door policy, or, but that's mostly the work of agents. Mm. You, you are the one like recruiting players for, for clubs. The clubs. So you go there with a the player. I think he says, if they check him out and he doesn't meet their requirement, you then you go back. Yeah. But if he does, then you guys will agree on his welfare, his contract, and everything. So that's just basically. So you, you're the one who you bring the talent to the club. Yeah. And then you tell the, and they, they test him or yeah. they try him. They find him to be, you know, of the standard that they want. Yeah. And, and you draw up the contracts. Is that what you do? Yeah. They will tell you what you can come up with, like, what can we offer this player? Mm. They need to, you, if you are going to be managing a mm. player, you look at the player, you create a pathway for him. Okay, you are just going to build your profile. You get, mm. like, what's in for you in the future in case your contract expires, in case there's injury, in case of... So you basically think of everything possible that can happen. Mm. And then you look out for your player. Then you interpret the contract and try to like, okay, if this contract is good enough for you, then go for it. Okay, so what's the advantage of being a FIFA licensed player? Because what you have just said yeah. is something that people have been doing yeah. without any, um, any, any like qualifications. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, any professional or FIFA-like qualifications okay. you know so how does this set you apart from the unlicensed agent okay it sets me apart and it says uh, i can practice anywhere in the world okay that's one like and apart from that again most of these people cannot transfer players outside the country it's only a licensed agent that can do that oh yeah like yeah, the only one that can move it. if you want to send a player abroad, they need the signature of a licensed agent on mm. the document mm. before the deal can go through. So that's the advantage. People can take players to clubs, but at the end of the day, it's up to a licensed agent to manage mm. and transfer them outside the country. Are there a lot of are there a lot of FIFA licensed um, agents in Nigeria? Mm, not really, because it's not like a yeah, um, it's not like a profession that is like very popular like that. Okay. But okay, so uh, what I think is, um, if there are not, if there are not a lot of of um, of, of licensed agents, that puts you in a good position yeah. in the sense that um, you are, you are, how do I put it? You know, you have a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. So what? What do you do? You experience that every day now when 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 do you experience that in, in the business yeah anywhere i go to at least i'm being respected i mean because okay. if you tell someone i'm a fifa license everybody wants to work with you because okay. they are very rare yeah. to come by so i think that's made my journey very easy okay because if i tell people i'm a fifa license agent and they see my id Mm. Then they'll be like, oh, can you come and work with my club? Mm. I have some players for you. So even, it's even like, it makes your scouting like, easier. Cause so coaches I, are I, see, I see what you mean. So the clubs themselves, because yeah. they need your signature when you're yeah. transferring players, yeah. the clubs would want you to work yeah. with them. Yeah. You know, so you can be the agent that, that yeah. appends. Is that, is that? Yeah, you can represent the club too. Mm. 
on their transactions like when they want to sell a player now mm. if you don't want to negotiate the amount they will buy the player mm. all those things so you're yeah, the only one that can do that and we are not much i think last time when i was writing the exam we were just ten thousand in the world ten thousand in the world yeah. okay so you so what, what do you do? do you work independent of a lawyer or or you 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 can work without so or do you have to work with with a lawyer yeah you have to work with a lawyer mm. when you're starting out because there are some clauses in contract that you don't understand mm. yourself and you don't want to get your client into trouble. Mm. So, and it's even states in our um, FIFA is that before you sign a player, you have to tell the player to seek legal consent. Okay. Before he gets into like a representation agreement with you. Mm. So, you have to work with lawyers too. Mm. When you get a contract, you can work with them. Mm. And yeah, you can work in independently too if you're a freelancer. You get mm. yeah, different pathways and so what experience when you go to when you go to these clubs, mm. is it like you see that they already had or they already have some FIFA agent or it's usually the case that when you go there, you know, they, they welcome you because because maybe you're like you know, one of the rare ones that they see. Yeah, so basically when I go there, I just tell them, yeah, I'm a FIFA license, and then they tell me, okay, I tell them how can I work with the club. Mm. They tell me what, how they operate and mm. everything. Because most of Nigerian clubs don't use in-house agents. It's only when they have a deal, they will look for agents to help them mm. look at it. But I just hope in future our system will start. Mm. We have a club will have their own in-house agent that mm. works with them and then helps them. Mm. bring in scout because you can also bring in scouts mm. for the club then oh a scout can bring in more scouts no, no. i'm an agent agents is different from scouts scouts are what the ones that me, look for the scouts are the ones that look for talent okay. are the ones that know the requirement the club needs yeah they recruit but agents are the one agents can be scouts so mm. when you're just starting out mm. you can just discover talent and fall in love mm. but scouts are different they, they just look for the talent they work with agencies or agents most times mm. So they look for the talent for the agent, and the agent does the rest from there. Okay, so what percentage of your business is, is, is local at this time? This moment. Because I imagine that you can still do international yeah. business, can yeah. you? Yeah? Sure. But what percentage of, of your business right now is local? Well, 100% local now because we're just starting now. 100% is local. Yeah. <laughs> so you see, here's the thing I, 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 I find... Ex um, um, how do I put it? I find... Um, um, curious, yeah? And this is for um, even any young person that's listening to, to the program. This, the domestic sports industry is where the opportunities are, right? You know, so this is where the jobs are created for young men like like, um, like um, Belumi. And this is where jobs are created for, you know, young talents, young lawyers, young physiotherapists, you know, but what I find that hap happens in this part of the world is we abandon the local league that is supposed to be bread and butter for our young people and ourselves for that matter. And then we concentrate on supporting clubs in Europe that then create jobs in Europe and then, you know, uh, basically kills jobs in Africa. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So tell me, I I'm sure that if I ask you that you have one club that you're supporting in Europe and, and the like, but it is your industry, so you must fight to make sure that the, the, the domestic leagues are successful because that's where you're going to earn your big bucks from. You know, you, not just you and your friends and all of that, but that's not what young people do now. They're so disconnected from our, our industry. What do you think we have to do to, to win them back? Well, I would say most people are like, Let's say most clubs are not well branded. They're not well branded. Yeah. Okay. So most young people can't relate. Okay. Like, you know, in the olden days, the MPFA used to like boys. Like, mm. I remember when I was growing up, I see all these Rangers in Imba, mm -hmm. they were buzzing then. So I feel most young people just feel, uh, let me just support this club because it has the clouds, it has the fiscal pre uh, online presence mm. and everything. So. I don't know what their reason is because me, um, anything anywhere they play ball, I go. You, you go everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. But, but okay, so here is the thing: football is, as you young people say, yeah. football is cruise. Yeah. 
but then football is business. Do you understand? So it depends on where you want to pitch your time. I think for most people now, they're pitching in, in the cruise. You just have a good time. Mm -hmm. But then you forget about the implications of destroying your own industry and then creating jobs in, in Europe. Do you understand? So you guys, I, you know, I see, when I see you talk about it, I, I, I feel your passion. And you know, I empathize with you because it's a struggle that you're going to face. Especially when, when our league becomes a thing, your players can now command a lot more money. You can command a, a, a bigger percentage, or you know, a more more lucrative contracts and all of that. You know, so um, I, I wish that you. It's also incumbent on you now to yes, keep fighting to make sure that uh, things happen in the league. Yeah. But do young people see sports as something that creates opportunity for them to make? money you know based on your interaction with your friends and all that do they see that as as a thing yeah yeah most young people actually like see it as a serious thing but we just need someone to take like the first step mm. most people are waiting for someone to just like to yeah and then when they see it everybody will up and so you feel that with your friends that are no, watching I, you and thinking? No, my friends are supportive. Like yeah. we go to places together. I mm. mean, they are not. They have their different careers, and mm. all. Mm. But they create time. If mm. I say, okay, let's go and do this. Let's go and watch this game. They follow me there. We network together. We mm. do things. So I feel everybody is on that wavelength. Mm. If you can just like carry them along. Okay. How do you pay your 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 your, your fees or your your salaries or your? How do you take care of yourself? Is this is your career at this point as a FIFA agent yeah. something that, that in the short term is keeping you above, above water? Yeah. You're earning income already from yeah, this? Yeah, I'm earning income. You are? Yeah. I say it confidently now. Yes, I'm earning income. <laughs> but are you able to pay your bills at this time? Yes. Now, don't, don't get worried because, you know, I mean, with most young people, I have a son, he's working, you know, he's struggling with his bills. That's the way life is. You start out struggling with your bills and over time you become a bigger agent or a bigger manager mm -hmm. and then you start, you become or do you understand? Then you start rolling in the deep, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. so um, if a young man is watching this program, you know, um, and they're thinking, it sounds like being an, ag an agent, a FIFA agent is something. Do you think you would say to them, yeah, that this is a lucrative career to have. Yeah, I would say it depends on your strategy at the end of the day. Mm. I've been plotting this whole thing like since when I was in Sunday level. So I knew what to do immediately I got the license. Yeah. I knew where to be. Mm. So it's not something you just jump into and mm. think ah money will come out immediately. Mm. You have to do your research. Mm. I've been researching for like two years before I wrote the exam mm. and I knew where to go to. So immediately I got the license, I started creating opportunities for myself and mm. at the end of the day, I started paying. It's paying off. Paying off yeah. How difficult it is, is it to get, you know, to get, to get started? In, in, if you want to be a FIFA agent, it's how very long does it take? I know, okay. how, how, what do you have to do? Um, you can't like, give it a specific, um, specific time frame, but all I have to say is that at the beginning, it's not always like, easy. When you're starting anything at the beginning, Mm. Obviously, it's not going to be easy, mm. especially when it's not something very popular. Mm. You get, when you are starting something, well, you just have to know where you are going at the end. But if you want to go in that direction, yeah. you know, you have to sit for an exam, right? Yes. How do you sit for that? Where do you go to to get? Um, That's NFF headquarters. Oh, it's, in it's from the NFF that you get. Yeah. The so name? basically, no, you check online. Okay. Then you go to FIFA website. Okay. Then you register. Mm. And when you register, the national this thing that you have here is in Nigeria is NFL. Mm. So obviously that's where you can write your exam because oh. that's to like the country. Yeah. The country's conversion um, this thing. So you go there, you pay for your exam fees. You take the exam. If you pass, you pay for your license fee. Mm. Then you start operating. They're ready to do to ready to do yeah. business. Mm. Okay, so do you have any any big players now that you are, you are an agent to, or do you have you just have some small players that you some small talents that you're developing? What what's the story? yeah? That's that's I have like young players are putting in academies for mm. like future investment for me. Mm. 
Oh, so you work with academies? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. You work with academies and you work with clubs. What's the difference? Academies and clubs. Academies just develop players like club they want finished product products okay yeah, so academies are the ones that develop players and so when you were a talent you took the, you take them to the academy yes if you are young i yeah. take it to the academy but if i see you are ready you are mature and you take it to the, the club. club yeah but those are like, how easy is it to do business with the academies and the clubs yeah, yeah it depends on the way you build relationships and everything yeah. but at the end of the day i found it easy so far i mean i walk up to the coach how can I help this team? Mm. I will watch your game and analyze. You guys need defenders, you need mm. midfielders. Mm. Then I tell you, I have someone. And okay. when you check the person, obviously, most of the talent I take there, they like them because before I can pick you, I know yes, because I've played football before, mm. so I know exceptional talent. So mm. when I take them there, then the coach will assess them and obviously take them in and they start their journey. Okay, so when they start this journey, who owns the player? That's you. The agent that brought the, the, the player there's the the academy yeah. and then there's the club how do you who owns the player there's a percentage like according to FIFA, yeah so the thing is now they are still minors if they're not to it you can't sign anything with them yeah so the best thing is you just keep supporting your growth okay i mean when they are going for training you give them something when they are going for you just support their journey mm. then when they are to be sold mm. you are going to get your percentage Okay, you know, there's the sell-on part of it. Yeah. Yeah. First and foremost, yeah. um, when they're 18, if you have invested in them and then they become 18 and you're shafted by, by an academy, for instance, and the player says, oh, you're no longer my, you know, I'm going to go with the, maybe because the club is offering them ju juicier terms and all of that, what do you do? A club can own a player. At the end of the day, yeah. you still need an agent. Okay. Everybody has like, different rules to play. What, yeah, what about the academy? Yeah, the academy gets, if they sell their player, mm. they get the transfer fee. Mm. But a certain percentage of that transfer fee mm. goes to the, to agent. the agent. Yeah. Oh, so so there's already like irregular. Okay, so like when, okay, so you get your cut. Yeah, you still get your cut. Academy gets his cut. The club gets his cut. Yeah. When you now sell the player to a different club? It depends on the contract. Yeah. So you can include a sell-on clause. Okay. So that we even regardless, train club that train players mm. still get money from any transfer mm. of that player. Mm. As long as the player is like twenty one, mm. they still get their training compensation. FIFA ensures yeah. that all through their career. All through their career. Oh, so it's not like so only the first deal. You know, you, any oh, club yeah. that trains them from the age of twelve to twenty one. Mm they will put it in their player passport. Okay, mm. I was once in Remo mm. from 12 to 15. Oh, wow. So those clubs, it yeah. gets training they must compensation. Get some, yes. some compensation from yes. any deal. Yes, any deal. Oh, that's interesting. And then there's solidarity, um, solidarity mechanism, that one, um, till the player is 23. Mm. Any movement, like, if you move from one club to another, it gets a certain percentage. The club gets a certain percentage. Mm. So any club that's been involved in the player's development from 12 to 23, yeah. You get that yeah. percentage. Okay. All right. We've been talking to Oluak Balumi Ademayawa Kudaisi, a young FIFA licensed agent, um, arguably the youngest in Nigeria. And if you're a young man watching the program, you can see that football, you know, when you talk about wanting to get, take to sports, People get scared because they say, oh, not all of us can become, you know, a JJ or Kocha. Not all of us can become a Kanu Wankwa and all of that. You know, what if, you, what if my son or my daughter these days can become one of the top players? What do they do? Belumi is an example. He says, I used to play football when I found that my level was not at the level that I can play professional sports. I took to... Um, to become a FIFA agent. And uh, look, there are agents in this world that are multi-millionaires, am I, am I right? Yeah. They're super agents, they make a lot of money. So the different ways, you start first. If you don't become an elite athlete, you can become a coach, you can become an agent, you can become um, a top referee, you can become a lot of things. The sports industry is not just the players at the top. There, there, there are a lot of things you can do um, for your child as well. And so um, we're gonna go on a short break and um, don't go away when we return we're going to be speaking to the boys from playball africa who, who are organizing a 
a university basketball challenge involving 12 Nigerian universities. Hello viewers, you're welcome back to the program. program. It's Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga and you're watching Plus TV Africa. We're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. You know, we, I just spoke with the exciting or the inspiring um, young Mr. Oluwa Belumi Ademayowa um, could I see who is the youngest FIFA licensed agents, agent in Nigeria? 22, you know. So, next, I'm going to be speaking with two other guys, um, they are representatives of Playball Africa. I have here in the studio with me the CEO, Mr. George Okonkwo, and the executive director, PR, Mr. Emmanuel Adegulu. Right today, I've been swamped by young people, uh, and I'm happy actually because um, they own the future. It's about time we brought some freshness into our sports. It's about time we brought the young people on board. You know what Nigerian young people have done with music, what they've done with our movies and all of that, what they've done with the tech industry. We're hoping they do the same um, with the sports industry. And joining me in the studio now are two of those people who've been doing pretty well with football, I think. University football. Just tell me, you're the CEO. What's going on? Uh... University football is going on. Okay. You know, um, Playball Africa, it's basically um, inter university universe, inter university event. Okay. So we have twelve universities this year mm. participating. Mm. So it happens every year, mm. every year. So but for now, twelve universities participating. Are you defending champions, uh, Bell's University? Bell's University, they are present. Okay. So we have. 12 universities are going to. Mm -hmm. um, if I can have the slide, it would be good. Well, I have the slide, it's going to go up soon. You know, so, but I looked at the, the, the list of universities. They're all from southern Nigeria. What's going on? This is your fourth edition or third edition. What, what is it? These are our, actually, these are our ninth edition. Ninth edition. Oh, counting back from your counting secondary back, school. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. ninth edition. But then, um, southern. Those are, these are the universities that are close to Lagos. We're not yeah. trying to go too far because mm. um, then we have to house the players and everything. Yeah. But then from next year, bigger bigger things are coming. Oh, so in the short term, because of financial um, yeah. and yeah. logistical constraints, yeah. you are, you're just focus, focusing on school within um, reach of Lagos. Yeah. But long term, you're going to go uh, yeah. nationwide. Yeah, sure. So what's been the reception like? Um, for the university basket, sorry, for the university football football games, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have done how many editions? Just two. So this is going to be the second one. This is the second one. This mm -hmm. is the second university one. Oh, really? For the university edition, yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought this, last year was the second or third. No, last year was the first university first edition. edition. Oh, okay. This is the second. So this is the second. And last year, what was the reception like? It was good. Over over three thousand people. Came to the camp. Yeah, it's Do you think it's, it's better this year? Ah, with more universities, we hope so. You hope so. Yeah. You should know now. I'm sure you're selling tickets already. You're, you're yes, sir, I said we've already, already, like mm. we've already sold more than last year. Oh, you sold more than last yeah. year. That's so, good. so hoping. people are. At, yeah. at university we sold more than last year online. Let me online. just let me just okay. say that. Yeah. So more tickets will be sold at the gate. Mm. Mm. Yeah. The only young person I know who knows about playball is my daughter. She's quite um, infused by the idea of, of playball Africa, you know. Uh, but what I, I find, I think, is a problem is that I don't think you guys are doing um, a lot. Your publicity needs to be a, a lot stronger, you know, because I still see people who don't, um, who don't even know about it, young students, you know. So you, you people really need to, to push. What's, where are you publicizing Playboy Africa at this time? Um, basically, we're just on social media for publicity, okay. um, Twitter, Instagram, mm. and Snapchat. But we're pushing ads, you guys. Like, mm. I'm actually even surprised that you said okay. you know some young students that don't know about Playboy because mm. the universities are even from interest. They're selected from interest, you get. Based on interest. Based on interest. Okay. So those universities, they were interested. Okay. Like, they're student representative, council, and all of that. But, like, next year, as my colleague said, Mm. Something bigger would happen. Yeah, something bigger. 
Are you, are you getting support from sponsors? From sponsors. Are we in what? Are you getting support from yes, sponsors? Yes, our headline sponsor for this year, the Palms Mall. The Palms Mall? Yes, sir. Okay. And then our, our refreshed by energies. Energies is a new energy drink just coming to Nigeria. Mm. Yeah, so those are our two headline sponsors. Those are sponsors. the main sponsors? Yeah. Okay, that, that's, that's interesting. So, basically, business is good, is it? Uh, business is going. Business is going. Yeah. You see, don't worry about it. At the start, it's usually, well, you don't just wake up one morning mm -hmm. and you're a giant. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to learn to, 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 to sit, crawl, walk, and, before, and, and then you run. You know? yeah. um, but the second event is happening in four days or, or so, is it? Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. four days. Yeah. Yeah. Four days, yeah. And still a like, campus stadium? Yeah, campus main stadium. Mm. What can anybody who is interested expect to, to, to see? Ah, the kind what to expect to see and, and to get as well? Um, fun. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. We have a lot of things loaded mm. for this year's Playboy. Currently, as we're speaking, we are in Playboy Week. Playboy Week is a uh, week filled with different activities mm. going from treasure hunts to palm store walking to um to different activities and esports coming up on friday so today yesterday we just concluded the first day of the treasure hunt which was very exciting a lot mm. of people found um the treasures that we hid around this, the this is like a build up to the to the events day, day yeah so um yeah it's going good it's going good and then friday is like the main day that's the esports day mm. with fifa tournament and call of duty mobile tournament so mm. yeah so for good. the fifa we're actually having an inter-university tournament for the fifa also so the oh. 12 universities are going to be competing against the two, two players, players two, two players from each of those universities oh so now let me see if i the 12 universities that are going to play yeah will first so you have two tournaments in one then there's the e-version yeah. yes and then there's the there's the real yeah, life, yeah. The real yeah. version when are the teams supposed to come to, to town um, um, basically our participants are mm. mostly based in Lagos state actually so mm. um but for friday i think of alola is some distance away all schools are in like holidays now mm. so, so all their players are, all their players are available okay yeah, they're all in lagos oh cool so um so there's fun and games do, are, do you have any headline acts are you bringing any one of your young djs or musicians come and play or something like that i'm um, like we said it's going to be a fun event you get so we have upcoming artists from each of the universities and okay. DJs from each of the universities to come and entertain the crowd. Oh, 12, that's like 12 DJs. 12, 12 DJs. DJs. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and when is it starting? When is it? Um, Time? Yeah. It starts by 9 and then ends around 7-ish. And then, not to forget to say, there's an after party for everything. After from Monday to Saturday, mm. the entire Playboy week, everything ends with an after party Saturday night. And they the final whistle of Playboy is mm. blown. The gates at the after party is open. Where is that? Rhapsody's Palms Lecky. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's where the after party is happening. Well, who's who's bankrolling this, um, the Palms? Who's bankrolling eh? The Palms. We're, we're partnered with Rhapsody's. Yeah, as well with yeah Rhapsody. okay that's 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 interesting so you're getting some sort of support at least yeah you yeah know? but what what are the plans that you have to grow this thing because you know sports is big business yeah, it's big but business. to to and to really interest sponsors and partners they've got to be able to key into the numbers they have to see the numbers the numbers what yeah. are you doing to drive your numbers do you have any such oh uh, so basically it's going to be starting from next year you know okay we're not going to be doing based on interest Okay. So next year we're going regional. Okay. There's going to be a regional qualifiers in each region in Nigeria from the north, east, west, mm. and south. So for like the east, uh, we're going to be having Nsuka versus Gregory and all of that. Mm. You get. So we're going to pick. We're going to have something called playball power rankings okay. and all of that. So the people with the when you go and play another school friendlies, mm. you submit. We take the records mm. and all of that. You mm. get. So those are the people that represent their schools. Mm. And all. So, like, this is more numbers because we have a lot of institutions in the country. Mm. So, 
Are you inviting anybody from Nuga to come and watch your games? Nuga. Yeah, because yeah, I, I understand that you're supposed to partner. We're supposed to partner with Nuga. Yeah, you're supposed to partner with Nuga. So, we're, we're working on that. We're yeah. working on Nuga, actually. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But, okay, so, I, are we going to be able to see this thing on television or are you going to stream it at least? You guys, you do all these tech things these days. You yeah. have cameras. You do. Are you, if somebody is not opportune to come to the venue, yeah. Uh, is there a way they can share in the experience? No, for sure, yeah. On our Instagram and YouTube, we're going to be mm. streaming live. We're going to be streaming live. We're going live. to be streaming live. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, I hear the fact that, you know, you have interest in, in the universities, you know. But what do you get from outside your core area, you know, your core area being your core target, university students, do you get any sort of echoes of support from, from the guys who sign the checks um, um, that make sponsorships available, like your parents? Uh, how do you promote to us, the older generation? Uh, have, you done, have you thought about that? Because you need to reach us so that we can support, we can speak about you in our offices, yeah. and then write checks for you to, you know, to support your transfer cash. To well, people is really not just based. It's not just for university students. Mm. Like last year, people there was an entire family. Mm. They're supporting their their um, child's awesome. school, okay. right? They were there till the very end because their school. Um, Inside the final, so they were dates very and they were very very cheap. So Playboy mm -hmm. is not just for students or should I say young people, mm -hmm. right? So there, it's open to everyone. It's just to enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy football for the love of football. That's what we're trying to push. Okay, so tell me, George, you are you guys are sharp guys. You know this is business for you. Um, how are you looking at the money coming in? You know uh, from Playboy. On Saturday or this week, you know, and then going forward, where how do you see money coming into what you're doing so that you can be adequately um, rewarded in your entrepreneurial journey? Um, starting from next year, actually, we're trying to enter that streaming market fully. Mm. So we're in talks with um, a company that does that. So they are actually willing to offer something huge mm. to stream these matches. Really? Yeah. Okay, so. Because they think they can get what? They can get, um, obviously, um, Subscription? subscriptions and all of that from their app. And all of that. Do you think Nigerian students would subscribe to watch Playboy? To watch their universities play, mm. they should. Like how much do you have in mind? It's very cheap. It's like 500. 500 bucks. 500. 500. If you get a million people to watch Playboy Africa, you guys, you know, next time maybe you pass by me, you are in a Rolls Royce or something. Amen. 500 Amen. Amen. Sorry? Amen. <laughs> but you have to work for it though. Yes, you definitely. Know, and I applaud the fact that you guys have been working. Your partnership, look, these guys have been partners for for the better part of what? Six, seven, eight Six, years? Six, seven, yeah. Yeah? Me and... No, me. your play ball. Oh, the you group? said you started yeah. this from seven years. Well, partners is, I think it's reaching like... 2017. 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's time. seven years. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, that, that's encouraging. It's very, it's, not rare, it's very rare to see Nigerians work on something together and last this long, you know. So I, I commend your, your efforts and, and all of that. Thank you. Is there anything you'd want to say about play ball that um, we should... I mean, talk to the young, the young people that you're talking to. I imagine you're going to show this to them, you know. Tell them what, what, why they should come on Saturday, you know, and why it's worth... It would be worth more than two thousand naira today. Ah uh, well, um, a lot of people dream of going to, you know, a World Cup final, the Champions League finals. Mm. We are trying to bring that feeling, that atmosphere mm. to Nigeria, to Lagos, and play ball. Last year, I will not say delivered that, mm. but we had a we had a tiny feeling about that. The atmosphere is. It's really, really crazy. Yeah. You know, when, like Covenant, for instance, last mm. year, they were losing, mm. I think, what was it losing? 
two zero first match they were losing two zero and they came back three two oh, wow. so the crowd went wow yes, like when yes. they scored the third goal so like the atmosphere is really crazy it's really interesting it's lots of fun football is the thing to football is the thing i fall in love with and i know a lot of people are in love with so mm. that's what i'm just, just trying to push and plus the food yeah the food is good yeah the food is good I, actually i was talking parents i don't want parents to hear this but we're talking to a young student you know and are you going to be able to play ball africa and she goes will there be fine boys there the other side so Yes, these are attracted to university and there were yeah. lots of I shouldn't say this on here, but there were a lot of beautiful ladies, ladies at Playboy yeah. last year. Yeah. We after Playboy on yeah. Twitter, people were really talking like they saw their future wives so <laughs> on Playboy last year. So we're expecting more. So beautiful ladies, beautiful, beautiful guys, guys, yeah. Good football. Good lots food. Lots of good food. Um you might stream it. Um so great atmosphere for young university students and you know people who have only recently graduated yeah. are the older people welcome definitely you know, so definitely. you can come yeah. a lot of them will come with their parents i imagine yeah definitely they should they should come with their, come parents, with their parents enjoy yeah. the atmosphere as a family yeah you know take pictures mm. post up keep memories total total and make it a memorable day yes sir people should come and they come and employ me now let me help you create um uh, zingas that you can use to the end. You're helping us already. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jeff. Nice talking to you again. Um, yes, um, and then uh, Emmanuel yes, also, also. The other members of the team, by the way, there's, there's Renny. Um, Renny, I think, was the first person I, I spoke with um, from your group. And then there's Okiki. I, he too is Emmanuel, right? Yeah. There's Emmanuel Okiki. Um, these guys are they're, they're doing. Um, quite encouragingly, um, they're trying to create some 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 bounds or some some fun in Nigerian in Nigerian life. And you know, when this thing becomes really big, there are so many things that society can gain from from it. Our children will learn values of how to collaborate, of how to you know to understand rules and follow rules. You know uh, how to you know unite it will unite them, create social inclusion. For for for, uh, for them, and then it also opens opportunities where I'm, I imagine that some people are going to come and sell uh, uh, some maybe some punches or some yeah. some yeah. you know some food. There are young people as well, so you're creating opportunities in your society. Like I was telling my my earlier, you know, let's build the country that we want to we want to. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. Do it and make money while you're doing it. Create a wonderful Nigeria. That's it. That's one that you know um, keeps our young people engaged and um, inspired. All right. So that's been it for the program. Thank you, George, for coming. Uh, thank you, Emmanuel, for coming. And I wish you all the best on Saturday. Thank uh, you, sir. Thank I, you, I wish that you you pull off a good one so that you do. make sure you take records. You know, make sure that you you count the number of guests that are coming there because. It's the numbers that the clients uh, are interested in. Uh, make sure you keep track with your Google Analytics to know your, your, your level of engagement on Twitter, on Instagram. Put these things together. Whether they're great now or not, at least they form the basis on, we, uh, f you know, on which that, uh, the clients can, uh, can assess you, yeah. you know, and then see where you can, you can take this thing to. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So that's it. That's been it on, on the program today. I remain Urufo Ezaga and the program is Sports Business with Urufo Ezaga. We're reaching you from Plus TV Africa um, and, and we're in our studios here in Victoria Island, um, Lagos. Until we meet again next week, um, if you want to engage with me, you can do so on Twitter or you can do so on Instagram and Facebook. On Twitter, of course, I'm at Urufo, O-R-U-F-U-O. And then on Instagram and Facebook, I'm Kenneth Urufo Izaga. Until we meet again next week, this is me saying um, be productive, be good, and stay safe.